So this is a pattern of the whole thing. You just traced this. Right. Mm -hmm. We did a rubbing of the actual window. Okay. And that's why when you see these, that's where the lead line was. Right. Yep. Um, when it has, the, those actually had steel bars inside of them. For reinforcement? Or? Yeah. Okay. Huh. So this is just to, to do the document and then how to... So what was the lead uh, in the, or the uh, I don't know what you call it, the lead or the, the, the metal part, uh, borders and all, all these, oh, that's, yeah, that's it, it was awesome. gone. Just, and just from years. See, you know, these pieces now are in pretty decent shape. You know, they just need to be cleaned. Clean they're not all crackled. Right. They do have the... Air bubbles burnt, in it. Well, oh. no, this is just crud yeah, from yeah. debris running down it with the water. Mm -hmm. So they haven't yeah. been cleaned no, yet. Right. And that's a corner. Because of the way it's all cracked. Crazed, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're at. Um, and... Uh, your next step is what? Uh, how how do you proceed then? What what, what do you do next? Well, we we're gonna want to know what size the new opening is. Mhm. Mm okay. Then we rebuild it. Well, we clean it all up. Clean the glass rebuild up. Rebuild it to make it fit the new opening. Okay. And the and then the we'll also have to, we'll also know then at that point how much repainting and remaking of pieces we have to do. So all the lead the lead. Uh, border work is totally redone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has to yeah. Be, has to and be. lead after a hundred years, it just breaks down all in itself. Okay. All right. Yeah. And um, when you're all done, then um, we'll, you know, we'll obviously we have to come up with a plan in terms of where to put it and everything. Uh, any any special, um, you know, framing to to, to support it. Jay Sussman, they're the uh, manufacturers of uh, basically storefront material where mm -hmm. it will accept a thermal pane window on the exterior yeah. and stained glass on the interior. Mm -hmm. And I can give you all that information. I got it right here. Sure. I think that's good. Because, I mean, that's well, good um, to get into the building plans. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I know we've, we've discussed it with the architect, and uh, we've, we've got... Uh, well, we had a spot for it. Um, we, we, I think we still do, but we'll have to confirm that uh, because we're dealing with the uh, the whole budget and, and how big and what where to put things, and that changes when you, when you make so any just other. Just take changes. us through the process of, of uh, what we're doing here as far as uh, restoring this stained glass. Due to the fire damage, we okay. had a number of pieces broken. Mm -hmm. And lead actually has a rather low melting point too, so right. the lead was damaged. Um, but then again, lead has about a about a hundred year time span to it. Uh, with the water hitting the glass and the glass being so warm because of the fire, it broke some of the pieces. And I understand that this is the one that survived. All the damage. Yes, is the only one that's. Right. And so there was some damage, but a minimal amount on this. What we've done is, uh, so far, is we did match the clear glass, what, what was there. Mm -hmm. And I have painted the broken pieces so that we have the daisies in the corners. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all restored. And this paint is um, crushed glass. And so oh, you okay. add um, the water is the medium that uh, spreads the crushed glass over and then uh, that goes into the kiln. So this has been painted with crushed glass essentially. And then which is a melt really fine, oh. fine uh, grit and then put into the kiln and fired. Okay. And okay. so it's very permanent. It is part of the glass at this point because it's fused on. Sure. And so matching these lovely, um, lovely daisy pieces, you can see these are a little shinier than the original ones. Uh, but actually, when we are cleaning these up, uh, we're using a rare earth item called cerium oxide, and. We use that 
uh, stone polishers use it to polish yep. all the uh, stones. And we're using it here to remove the um, surface of the acid rain and any of the etching that the acid rain's done. So uh, we're cleaning it up and we have recut and reproduced in paint uh, what we could. And then uh, once everything is all in position, it's all laid out on the tracing mm -hmm. that yes. we had initially where we left off, right. apparently. And so we are laying it out onto that tracing as our cartoon is called. It's a master copy of how everything fits together. Sure. And then we start building. And we're building it with um, zinc on the outside for strength. And again, traditional lead. So it's the old traditional uh, construction. And so, excuse me, so, so this is the zinc over here? The zinc's on the outside edge. Oh, right here? Strength. Okay. And we will have reinforcements mm -hmm. on this. But uh, the zinc construction is through here. It was all half inch, beautiful half inch zinc. And old style painted pieces, they actually kind of framed it out with, with um, paint. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at a stained glass, actually in the window with the light transmitted through, you see just a silhouette. So these will look from where people are sitting, these will look just like the lead area. Right, okay. And so it's a silhouette where the black is a uh, complete masking out, the, mm -hmm. the black paint that's been fused on the surface. Great. And so um, we match color, we clean up, um, we paint, and then we construct. From this construction, uh, everything will get leaded out. Um, it's still done by hand, and mm -hmm. nothing has changed over centuries. And uh, then we glaze the unit so that uh, traditionally you glazed for it to be weatherproof. Yeah. But uh, this will probably have modern days we're putting glass on it to protect it from the outside elements. So a whole layer of glass mm -hmm. over the outside. Yes. Now, how so, many of these pieces are, are original and how many are, I mean, just an example, are, are, are I would most say three quarters at least. Are still original? At least. Okay, right. Um, it's surprising that a lot of things haven't changed. There's companies that were in the eight, late 1800s that made this glass hmm. are still in business. Wow. It's kind of scary. So, so a lot of these are European, I assume, then? No. No. No, actually, um, there are some mouth-blown pieces. Um, the mouth-blown pieces, they're actually the, uh, making this flat glass by making a cylinder first. Okay. And blowing a cylinder. I actually have one. One second. I'll be right back. Sure. So the glass blower is actually... Um, making a cylinder and they are using a mold as well. Um, so this is at the end of a punty. Uh, the tube that they're blowing through. Okay. And um, it's rather heavy. This is about 15-20 oh, pounds. So oh, I believe it. Big, big men do this. And then what happens is they score and break the ends off, score down the middle, and in heat, Heating it up, they lay it out. Okay. And then it goes sure. through the up uh, the kilns and the annealing process. So that's how mouth blown glass is made. Sure. Uh, traditionally, it was always called cathedral glass mm -hmm. because it wasn't until the 1880s when um, uh, John Lafarge came in with um, light being added to the glass that made it opaque. Mm -hmm. And then Tiffany got really interested in that because you could make what he called the light screens or the lampshades out of that because the mechanics didn't show. Right. So traditionally, um, anything before the 1800s, it was um, produced this way and it was all very transparent. You could see through it. Right. And so 
the artist would paint to change um, the appearance of it or layer. Yep. Um, the glass painting or the stained glass part comes from when they didn't add the metals to the um, to the mixture of the glass. They yeah. started adding the metals to the mixture of the glass and producing that yellow glass. Before that, they would actually use uh, silver for yellow. And so silver powder was added to clear glass and thus the staining of glass or stained glass. Oh, okay. And so previously, in old, old windows, they are stained. These are mouth blown pieces. So and that whole process that you just mentioned is how that piece is. Is how yeah. most of these are made, mm -hmm. yeah, with mouth blown glass. Mm -hmm. is, is, the, um, is the process, uh, makes the, does it make the, the waviness that, that we see here? That's, that's just natural? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's natural. That's just natural by hand blown mm -hmm. or mouth blown. Mouth blown. There's also this uh, surface, and you can see the air bubbles being drawn. Sure. I don't know if you see these seeds or air bubbles in there. Yeah, um, if you get it just at the right angle, let's yeah. tip it down. There we go. Now I can see it right there. You can you usually see it on lighter glass too? Yep. And that's mouth blown as well. So from here, uh, you obviously have to do all the the leading, mm -hmm. uh, and then the you end up with the the just the clear glass over the exterior portion of it? On the outside at least. Mm -hmm. yep. Just to protect it from the elements. Good. Anything else that we should know? I think that gives us a pretty good idea. All right. It's heavy when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.